Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm here in Frisco, Texas, and once again, I'm delighted to be joined by Lou DeBella. Lou, how are you, sir? It's been a while. It's been a while, man. It's good to be here. There's too many guys at IFL TV now. You don't know who's who nowadays, nah, is it? It's, it's, it's everybody's IFL TV. It's the Coogan Cassius clan. <laughs> I've never heard. That's quite good. We'll use that, the Coogan Cassius clan. Well, there's a reason why there's a huge fight happening on Saturday night in uh, just over I like, there. I like the fight, Saturday. I'm not going to stay for it. I have, I, have to, I have to get home. I got some things I got to take care of. But I will promise you, I'll be watching the Zone USA on Saturday night, and I really am looking forward to the Garcia Vargas fight. I think it's a very good fight. I, I think it's. Um, I think Garcia, Mikey is the superior fighter, the superior boxer, um, but he's smaller. And honestly, I think Mikey. I don't. I, I, this fight's at 147, which sort of puzzles me a little bit because I think Mikey is so much better at a lower weight class. But he look, he's looking for challenges. Vargas is a real good fighter. Vargas is bigger and I think a little bit stronger. So it's a compelling fight. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. If you made me guess, uh, I, I probably would pick the favorite, Mikey. But I think Vargas is a very, 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 very live underdog. And I think the reason for that is size and strength. Both of them mentioned yesterday at the press conference, Mikey Garcia and Jesse Vargas, that this is the... Barrella Morales esque. Do you sort of see that sort of? Oh yeah, I think it's going to be a throwdown war. I think they're going to throw. I think they're going to go after each other. Yeah, I think it's going to be a fun fight. I mean, Barrera Morales war. That's like saying Gaddy Ward. I mean, you can't. You know, like that's like that's hollowed ground. Okay, but do I think that if the point was, do I think that they're going to turn it into a a, a firefight? Yes, I do. I think it'll be a fun fight. Eddie Hearns came out and said, oh, you just seen the cookies there, Lou? You yeah, seen the cookies? Yeah, I'll meet you. We'll go and grab one after this. Um, Eddie Hearns said this is the best card he has ever put on as a prop motor. What's your thoughts on that? He's full of shit. But, but <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it's not it's the best. It, it's a very good card. I mean, Eddie said, if, if, I, if I had a dollar for every time I heard Eddie say that the card that he was then promoting was the best card. But I'll tell you what, it is a deep card. And it, it is a very, very good card. And you get to see Chocolatito in a very, very good matchup. You get... Uh, maybe it's his last hurrah. I, I, I actually think it could be the end for him, but but he's one of the all-time greats and a fun fighter to watch. That's a sensational matchup. The main event's sensational matchup. There's some good talent underneath it loaded on the card. So where I'm going to say that Eddie is prone to hyperbole, he's a he's a P.T. Barnum, Don King-esque uh, promoter. You know, that's what we do is we build things up. But when he says it's one of the better fights, it's certainly one of the better cards. It's, probably the best card so far this year and and and, and, I, and I, I'll accept that from Eddie that it's one of the better cards he thinks he's promoted but do I think Eddie you know I've heard every fight's the best this is the best <laughs> card I've ever done but it's a, I'll tell you what if you're in the, in the Dallas area and you don't come out to this you're making a mistake and if you have the zone USA you got to tune in because this is a really fun show on Saturday night and if you don't have the zone USA with everything that's going to be coming up you probably should get it subscribe subscribe well, there's a reason why you're here. There's a reason why you're in Texas. You're your ch your the, charge... Uh, Regis Pro Grey versus Maurice Hooker fight. Yep. What's your thoughts on the, the fight itself, then? I love the fight. I mean, it's the best fight we could make for Regis right now. It's the best... Two best available guys around that weight class fighting each other. Um, you know, it's, it's literally... Both Hooker and Regis are fighting the best opponent available to them right now. That's all you could ask of any champion. It's all you could ask of any fighter. And I don't care that a belt's not on the line. This is as good as any title fight you're going to see. It's a terrific matchup. Catch me, I heard you say 143 pounds. Is that... Because I remember Regis back in, uh, when he was fighting, Josh said that if he wins this, he's going to move up to 147. No, is it easy for we, Regis we to make one? Been, this fight probably could have been done for a WBA eliminator for the man, to become the mandatory to Josh Taylor. And then we would have, we would have been happy to do that. But, uh, we, you know, Maurice Hooker uh, isn't able to make 140 right now. And it's not, or at least he's not able to make 140 easily. And without a world title at stake in this fight, we agreed to the 143 catch weight. But we would have come down to 140 for an eliminator. Maurice wanted the fight at 143. We made a deal at 143. Regis is an active guy. I mean, he scuba dives, he rock climbs, he does all sorts of things when he's out of camp. Are you expecting a fit, Regis? And do you expect him to get the stoppage against Maurice Hooker, like similar to the way Ramirez put it on him? I think Regis is going to try to put it on him. You know, I think that it's going to be a, an interesting fight for some rounds. And I expect Regis to take over with the power and the strength somewhere in the middle of the fight and maybe get a stoppage late. I expect Regis to win, and I would, 
I would be inclined to think the fight's not going the distance. I know you're a busy man and the press conference looks like it's about to start very shortly, but I want to get your quick opinion on the huge heavyweight fight last Saturday. Wilder and Fury. Fury surprised as well. Did he surprise you? Um, yeah. I mean, that he, that he went after him from the beginning, that he did everything he said he was going to do, that he knocked him out, stopped him. Well, I mean, the towel was thrown in, but as far as I'm concerned, that was a stoppage. It was a one-sided uh, beatdown. But um, it was a brilliant performance by Fury. I don't think Deontay was at his best. I don't think he looked himself from the beginning of the fight. Um, you know, but he's fought a lot of rounds with Fury, and Fury's a very skilled boxer. But in this fight, not only was Fury the, Fury the boxer, Fury was the puncher. In, in this fight, Fury did everything. You know, uh, look, credit to Tyson Fury. He came in, carried into the ring as the king, and he left the ring as the king. And right now, he's the king of the heavyweight division, and all hail Tyson Fury, he's earned it. You said that you don't believe Wilder was himself in that ring. Do you sort of half or do you believe the story about the costume being 40 pounds weakened his legs I don't know and I wouldn't comment on it it sounds a little wild to me but I'll tell you this he may believe it and it's not up to me as to whether I believe it he may believe it I, I think he went into that ring and his legs weren't under him and maybe he doesn't know why mm -hmm. look fighters look for reasons all fighters I've been doing this for 30 years when a great fighter loses particularly an undefeated fighter they're looking to figure out what made them lose mm -hmm. why they didn't have it that night what was different mm -hmm. you know so like you know, I understand why people don't like excuses, but a lot of the, I think people are getting carried away in their criticism and abuse of Wilder. And by the way, for everything everybody's saying about Wilder, how many guys out there could, could beat him in the heavyweight division right now? Very, very, I mean, there's, there's two that I would think have a chance. And one, one, of them, one of them we already know can beat him, and that's Tyson Fury. And the other one maybe would, AJ would be a, a fight that, that I would think the outcome is in doubt. You know, but but pretty much everyone else in the division, Deontay Wilder would still be a favorite against. So I'm not I'm not cool with all the, like you know, the, hey, they made the fight, they made the rematch. He fought Ortiz in a rematch. I mean, Deontay, for all people want to make make believe that he hasn't fought anybody or he's avoided people, uh, I don't think that's the case. You know, I just think he lost on that particular night. He lost badly to a better fighter last Saturday night. He lost badly to a better fighter that night. He didn't look good. Tyson Fury looked insanely good, and Fury dominated and won in style. He walked in the ring, the king left the king, did what he was supposed to do, you know. Um, and I know that that Deontay, I, even in with everything that was said, he gave Fury the credit that I think Fury deserves. Staying on Fury, then, I know you you, you had Wild at the beginning of his career there. Do you want to see the, the trilogy? At the beginning of his career, I had him the from. The middle, sort of thing. I had him really from the from the from the, after he won the title against Devern, mm -hmm. uh, and I did and, and you know I, I worked with him. I didn't have him. We worked together. And and by the way, like I'm grateful for having that time. Where There's we no bad together. blood between you and Wilder, is there? But not me personally toward him. No, I don't think there is. I, I wouldn't think there is him personally toward me. I don't feel any bad blood, and I I I, I like him. I like his family, and I wish the best for them. Mm -hmm. Just going back to the Fury, do you want to see the trilogy or do you want to see the Joshua fight for Fury this year? I wouldn't mind seeing both, but I probably would like to see Fury beat Joshua first. Mm -hmm. Or, I, well, excuse me, I just revealed my prediction. Um, <laughs> beat? Did you say beat? Him? I would make him the favorite. Yeah. I think Fury's the favorite to beat Wilder. I mean, to beat, I'm sorry. Well, he's the favorite to beat Wilder there's again. Too many, there's too many names. Just <laughs> Look, at the moment, Fury's the favorite against every heavyweight in the world. And as a fan, I probably would rather see... Deontay fights somebody like Andy Ruiz and then fight the winner of Fury and, and Joshua as a fan. And I think probably if I, if I was working with him, that, that might be something I would advise because I could see that being better for him. But he's, he makes his own decisions, and he, he, and, he, and he deserved to get a rematch clause. He, he wrote it into the deal. He had the ability to call for a rematch, and he's calling for a rematch he's allowed to call for. you got to give him credit for having big balls to do that, to say, I want to get right back in there with with uh, with with Fury after what happened Saturday night, um, it, it's still a fight that I think a lot of people will watch. Um, but obviously, at the moment, the biggest fight in the heavyweight division would be Fury, and and there's no question it would be Fury and and uh, and AJ, and and also you would think that Deontay could make more money fighting the winner of Fury and AJ than he could make by going right back in to the Fury fight. But I don't know what deal he struck. But, but if the deal he struck had a big guarantee in it, then maybe it makes perfect sense. If the deal he struck simply a percentage deal, 
I wouldn't think the third fight would do as well as the first or second fight. Well, excuse me. I think the first fight, the third fight could do as well as the first fight or better, a little bit better than the first fight. I wouldn't expect it to do better than the second fight. Finally, before I let you go, there is media behind me as well. I want to get your thoughts on Josh Taylor. We had a little bit with Boxing Social. What's your thoughts on Josh Taylor and his mandatory against Kong Song? And what do you, what do you think about the Josh Taylor Ramirez keep, fight? Keep your backyard in order, my friend. <laughs> you got all the ability in the world, buddy. Keep your eyes on the prize. I got a fan. I like Josh Taylor. And, 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 uh, and I expect him to look really, really good against this guy from Thailand. I think it's, there are levels in boxing. I think Josh is on a different level. But it's his mandatory. Go home. Have a big homecoming fight. Homecoming conquering hero. Mm-hmm. And uh, go beat your mandatory, and then move on to bigger things. Uh-huh. Would you like to see Ramirez and uh, Ramirez the Pro Gray Taylor rematch at one four seven? That's I'd something. I'd like to see the Pro Gray Taylor rematch. I'd like to see Ramirez uh, against Pro Gray. I'd like to see Ramirez against Taylor. Um, you know, I think it'll be clear after the fight with Maurice Hooker uh, that the the best forty pounders in the world are are those three, and I'd like to see some kind of round robin happen between them. Same as the heavyweights, I suppose, with Joshua, AJ, uh, Joshua Wilder AJ and Fury. Yep. You know, I'd like to see a round robin there, too. I won't keep you much longer, Lou. Again, thank you for this, Fightful TV. Cheers, bud. Yeah.